It's Thanksgiving morning, it's snowing, and a beautiful day to digitize. Brian here. Let's use Stitch Artist 2 and create this leaf using the point input mode. What we'll do is get this design up and place it about there. And next we'll click on the point mode and start making points. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. Just have to get them approximately where this shape is going to be. We'll use a freestanding input, and this only needs to be a single run. We'll set the color to one of the Christmas colors. How about a Madeira Christmas Red? And that lets us get to the next part, which is inputting the satin stitches. Here we're using two satin columns that are going to overlap slightly in the center, which will give it a nice realistic organic effect. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. Just go ahead and overlap the edges of the drawing slightly as you put those in. Now we'll set a pattern. We're going to go ahead and use a length limit in this case, which will allow us to make various sizes of these leaves and give us some texture. Along the edge, though, I want to use an edge pad. This will give us a satin uh, shinier finish along the outside edge of that column. That last column went up and now we're going to work our way back down. Again, notice we're overlapping the edges just ever so slightly. And I had also set the properties on this um, satin stitch to have a little bit of pull comp, about 0.4. It never hurts to save, so let's go ahead and just save a copy and get used to saving the working file. Let's call this a leaf, and click Save, and there we go. Next, I'm going to take the background image off of this, because I really don't need it at this point, and I'm going to be making copies of things. Now here, let's talk about placement. We could just make a circle, and figure that's where the center of this design will be, and then we could go ahead and basically take copies of this leaf and place it all the way around the edges. Um, let me just start setting up a few of those so you can see kind of quickly. That could be tedious, so I'm going to use a feature that I wrote for Enthusiast called Carousel. Carousel lets us put these seven leaves in a circular position automatically. And I'm going to bring the whole thing a little closer together by reducing the width and the height just to sort of tighten up the pattern. And there you have it. Now we're going to do the stem for our leaf. We'll use a satin input and make a nice organic shape, a simple curve coming in toward the center. Go ahead and end that. Let's change the color and use a corresponding Christmas green from Madeira. That'll work. And now let's take a closer look at the part where the stem joins the leaf. If I widen this up a little bit, we still have the length limit parameter which comes into play and gives us this nice organic shape and texture to it. So now we need a connective run 
to go from this stem towards the next stem in the process. Let's go ahead and put in a simple line and turn it into a run, and now we'll start to make the next ones. I'm going to speed this up so it shortens the video a little bit. Have a nice listen. Using the circle tool, I'm going to create an object with freestanding background, which is going to actually get a double pattern in this case. And of course we put it at the end, but I want to move that to the beginning, because I want everything to sort of anchor onto it, and that will hold all of the leaves in place. Now we're going to go ahead and save the working file, because we're at a good point to do that, and also because we are going to make three files out of this design. This is going to start as the back, and then we're going to add a middle, and then finally a top or center design on top of that. This one we're going to copy, paste, make it a little smaller, rotate it into place, and so now you can see the middle layer of our design. This design's going to use three layers, and the first layer will actually have green leaves. So I'm going to select all of those red pieces and click on the color chip and select from the design palette the green that we've already chosen. The next thing we're going to do is add a third layer and pretty much do the same thing we've already done with the middle. The next thing we want to do is complete the center design. We're going to do this by creating a nice loose line, and we're going to set that using the program motif to have an eyelet run. This eyelet run will place eyelets along the line that we created, but we will have to make them the right size for the shape that we've done. Go ahead and position them or do whatever you want to make it look good. And here I'm just going to pick a random yellow, and now we have a nice looking locale to place some candle wicks. The candle wicks are going to sit inside the eyelets, and they provide a nice look that sort of replicates what a poinsettia would look like. Here I'll set it to white, and I'm going to speed things up a little bit so that you can see the placements and sizing. Now that we've done that, we can take and select everything and use our auto entry exit to clean up any small issues with transitions between objects. Now that we've done that, we need to separate these three layers into individual files. Each design in the design tree will be its own file. You'll sew them out as three pieces and then stack them together for your project. What we're going to do is simply copy and paste each layer or each design into a new design page and then save the file. In this case, I already had a file named one, so I'm going to save it. That's to show you something in a minute. And now let's go ahead and do the second design and, of course, the third design the same way. Here I'm just renaming them to two and three, respectively, as we save them. Let's go back to the original composite design and save it. You never know when we might want to use it or adjust it later on in time. Now, as we're doing this, it calls to mind that note I wanted to tell you about, which is relative to the names of files. If you have two design pages that are saved with the same name, the program will add a two, three, or four to keep you from overwriting your original file. Believe it or not, this is ready to sew. Thanks for watching and have fun.